Well, today we're gonna to turn this 145 into a remote control tractor. Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, so here's how this thing works. This is the remote that's gonna control it. It'll run everything from starting the tractor, turning the PTO on, running hydraulics. Um, you can actually even run a couple other things like your swing on your augers, auger movers and stuff with these different buttons as well. They're programmable. It'll start the tractor with this little deal. This stuff's all from RC Farm Arm. So they're RC company, remote control company that started in Canada. Um, they're kind of buddies with the Neralta guys. That's how I got to, to know them. Um, they have all sorts of different configurations they'll make. This is gonna go on our armrest it's gonna run all of our functions. It'll still be operational to some extent with this on, uh, but it's really easy to take off if you need to run you know, something else in the meantime. So it has a brain box. This thing is gonna mount in the corner of the cab and be a pretty cool system for starting the auger, running the PTO, uh, the grain bagger will work to run the hydraulics so we can run our swing. The one thing we're still gonna work on is figuring out how to get it in neutral remotely. But they're working on that. Um, CVT transmission is a little more tricky for that because after you're off the seat for a while, it automatically hits a parking brake. But there is a way to override it. You just have to hop in the cab to do it. So that's the only downfall for it right now. But as far as loading bins, running the auger, current, turn the PTO on. Oh, it'll also rev up the throttle with these little black vertical actuators here by pushing our power or rpm lock buttons here so they love everything it's available for lots of different configurations first off i went ahead and set my rpm sets so there's one there's two so that's what these buttons are going to push so that'll set our rpm so have to mess with the both throttles We'll just push that button and it'll run, run our RPMs where we want to set it. So we got to take off this PTO knob and then place this over the top of that and that'll run that. Let's reinstall that back on. And then we got to put a uh, connector here. It's actually a bolt with a hook on it. This is gonna go in here. So hook underneath down here and get tight, but get put my camera down. Well, I got the control box mounted back here into a couple of the existing bolts. And uh, here we're gonna mount the uh, ignition. I uh, pulled these screws out of these two holes. There are these bolts that go in there. Just slip that on and run these in. Hold that in position. Actually, I was thinking that these had to come out, but I gotta put those back in. Hold on, start over. These actually have the nut certs in them just to hold it on, and these need to stay in there to hold that all together. I'm thinking, how's that gonna stay together with those out? My bad, don't do that. Put that back in. That makes so much more sense. Try it out now. So we're gonna hold the start buttons down. Turn PTO on, which takes two buttons. So unlock it, unlock it, PTO on, button, hit our hydraulic one. 
rods were running. And then RPM one. Speed up. the tractor off that's cool we'll go check out rc farm arm they are on all sorts of social media i think they're even on tiktok instagram youtube videos and since dad never bought me a rc car when i was little just got myself a an rc tractor way better than a remote control car well the next project i don't know maybe a good idea to replace that That was easier than I thought. That's the new one on. Can't say it was exactly the easiest thing to get on. Here it wasn't too bad, but putting that band on was a little difficult. It's on there. I'll right, put it back together. So, we are... Oh! Lauren beat me to it. But we're gonna pull the auger out. Bin auger, bubble up auger, I don't know. Any other names Seven up and bubble up. Yeah, that one. Because that's almost sharp enough to cut silk. So we're gonna put some poly on it to make it last longer. Slicker than a grease pig. Well, that's certainly much easier than lifting it out by hand and fingers getting tired. Oh, if you need workers' comp for that. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. All right, so these are what we're putting on from May West. It's just a wear shoe for these augers. So it'll take the brunt of the wear. This is what they look like. Off the machine, set them on. Easy instructions and Hardware kit, Woo! going everywhere. Hardware kit, to show you how to do it. So we gotta clamp them on, mark the holes, and it says either drill them out or use a plasma cutter, but that's probably abrasive resistant steel, so we'll probably use a plasma cutter, to make life a little easier. And put these on and get this back in. All right, well we've opted to use the plasma cutter because we really can't fit a drill in between here and there. So, unless we had a 90 degree drill. But, cut those three holes. We'll have two more here from these starter bolts. They're, we're doing both combines, so we have enough of those. Put a bolt here and a bolt here, since this is your leading edge that's pulling the grain up out of the bottom. Warren's trimming this because this flighting is obviously narrower than main flighting of the tube. So he's going to trim that piece off real quick and then we'll get to going again.
Starting over. Take three. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. All done. Took us two hours. Not knowing what we're doing. Plus Warren ran off to do yeah, whatever he wanted. Things. Yeah, he, had, he does what he wants. <laughs> there we go. Back to the combine. Well, Paul is all installed. Going back in. Well, we got the feeder chain in there now. Not hooked up on the bottom yet, but we're gonna do that once the combine got the feeder house on there. And uh, then we don't have to fight that drum coming downhill the way it's, way it's hanging there. So next, getting ready to put that on. I think you needed these. Uh, I think you're wrong. Uh, it's back off because we forgot some heavy pieces. Important, according to some people. Diverters. I don't even know what they're called. Thingy thingy. It's need a pry bar for that, huh? Oh, oh, got it. I got two of them. What are you? That's that. Where's TJ oh, when we yeah. you need him? Uh, oh, they're in my hand. I got not TJ's nuts in my hand. <laughs> if you wonder what we're talking about, TJ from Round the Bend Steakhouse in Nebraska was here a month ago and uh, he left his mark everywhere. Bless his heart. <laughs> We do it right because we do it twice. <laughs> right? We're getting way too good at doing this. <laughs> off and on, off and on. Well, the potentiometer is in. That's going to tell us our auto or our header height. Um, we've got a new door that's going to go in here from Stuart Steel that is um, openable. You don't have to pull all the bolts out, a couple wing nuts. We'll put that on in a minute. Fear chain, get that tight. It's all hooked up in there now. Just finishing up, hooking up a few more things. The hydraulic block, get the U-joints all hooked up and then do a little greasing. A couple of zerks in there we gotta take care of. So, coming right along. That's 
pretty handy. Handier than a shirt pocket that I would never use. That means you have to get in there and grease it. Though. That's true. Okay. Which I just did, so it should be good for the year, right? Hundred hours. Okay, a couple times. It's ready to go outside. Minus a incline auger, poly resurfacing, which we can't do in here because we can't open the grain tank. New shed thing, right? Yeah. Drive it in with the extension up and don't even care. Maybe someday. Number two is ready to go outside. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, but don't forget, farm hard, pray harder. See you next video.